Yo, 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 it's your main man, Mikey B, coming at you with the freshest pork taste, but dude, why are you doing this to me? So yeah, it's me, Mike. And I, James R.I. Katie. You know, the poor taste, taste buds. buds. That's right, fans, it's our first video of 2022, and we're coming in hot with some big news. Have you guys noticed that we haven't actually made any food on this particular program in quite some time? Yeah, we've been leaning on the Quick Bites pretty hard for a while. Um, and while commercially available weird foods are definitely, you know, they're worth trying, uh, and Quick Bites as a concept are, you know, much easier to make and therefore easier to get from concept to directly into your eye holes in a timely manner, um, they're definitely not as fun as the ones where we actually get to make the food. You know, at least not for us. You. What's that? You. Right, at least not for me. In light of all that, our big news is no more Quick Bites. What? I know, right? For real? Yeah, boy. Now we know what you're all thinking. It'll never work. You guys are crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your trousers on. Yeah, the fact is, we may, at some point, uh, think of some use for the editorial name Quick Bites. But it occurred to us recently, as we pointed out a few camera angles ago, uh, that single course videos are just way easier to make. Yeah, and I'm uh, not feeling the need to tie them together thematically or uh, fit them into six distinct courses as dictated by the fine dining elites. Uh, it just, it'll mean that we'll be able to just make and release videos more frequently. And let's face it, with almost 4,000 possible recipes on the list and- Really? Yeah. 4,000. How? We'll talk about it later. With almost 4,000 possible recipes and counting, and just so many definitely not made up fans clamoring for a particular brand of culinary comedy, we can afford to just, just do stuff. Just like, do stuff. Like just, to, just pick stuff off the list and then just, just, just do it. Well, I'm all for that. This is what you told me to say. So what are we doing tonight for our first ever non-quick bites uh, single course episode? I'm glad you asked, my fine feathered friend. So I was I was thinking about what we should do on this particularly momentous occasion. And uh, basically any time over the last few years when when people when I'd be explaining to a potential new fan what we do here on Poor Taste Buds, you know, we eat weird food from TV and movies and stuff. Um, not all of them, but most would fire back with the exact same example. And uh, I don't want to spoil it here, if only because I, I, hate, I hate Mike so much. But I will tell you this. It is from Friends, and it's exactly what you think it is. I mean... They've already seen the title of the video. Shut up. And aren't we just going to go upstairs right now and make it? Okay, Mike, 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 why don't you... Okay, Mike, Mike, what are we making? What are we making, Mike? What from Friends are we making? Mike! I I, I have no idea. I already... You're damn right! Okay. What is it? It's a trifle. It's got all of these layers. First, there's a layer of lady fingers, then a layer of jam, then custard which I made from scratch. <laughs> then raspberries, more lady fingers, then beef sautéed with peas and onions, <laughs> more custard, and then bananas, and then I just put some whipped cream on top. <laughs> So while Mike, I have done it So while I let Mike, who actually didn't have any hand in making this, so he doesn't know the twist, um, oh, no. uh, uh, while he's serving this up for us, um, is that grilled beef? Maybe. Some of you are probably out there thinking, wasn't wait, wasn't that episode of Friends? Wasn't that the one where Ross gets high? Wasn't that a Thanksgiving episode? And well, first of all, I mean, yeah, it totally was. And second of all, shut up. Let's face it, a traditional English trifle and uh, American Thanksgiving don't really have anything to do with one another outside of that single episode of Friends. Um, but for those of you that don't know, yes, 
Uh, Rachel made a traditional English trifle for dessert on Thanksgiving, and the pages of the cookbook got stuck together. And so she made mostly an English trifle, but also a little shepherd's pie in there. So there's ground beef and onions and peas in there, along with Ladyfinger's custard, bananas, raspberries, jam, and whipped cream. The custard, like Rachel herself, we made from scratch. Uh, it turned out a little runny, and I had to improvise a little bit. You may have noticed in the ingredients photo that there's a bottle of vanilla Nestle Quick. One last little gift that my, uh, my former roommate left, or didn't leave, uh, before moving out, after stealing just so much of my booze, is that he also apparently stole my, my small bottle of vanilla extract, which is basically just a tiny bottle of vanilla vodka that has really? mysteriously disappeared. So last night when I went to make the custard, I was like, I had to improvise and I had to go to the gas station up the street. And so I just got some, because it already had milk in it, I got some vanilla milk. So um, I tasted it. It tastes like custard. A little runny, but uh, I got that recipe off of the Spruce Eats. Uh, and it's by Elaine Lem. There'll be a link in the description. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. How do you think this is going to be based on how I just described it? Ross described it as tasting like feet. I don't think it'll taste like feet. I don't either. I think it'll taste like two separate things at once. Yeah, I don't. I didn't. I I, on, I only lightly salted the beef, and even that I felt a little bad about because there was no indication that that's that's what she did. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's gonna taste. I don't think it's gonna taste that bad either. But yeah, it's. I'm not even worried about the, all the sweet stuff and the meat. I'm more concerned about the peas and the onions. But it'll be fine. Oh, I'm not. I mean, we have the buckets, but I don't think we're gonna need them. No. So, but you gotta make sure that you gotta make sure that you get a little bit of everything in there. I think I got it. I oh, think I did enough. Those lady fingers there, are right? nice and soft. Gross. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. You're welcome, sir. Yeet. Nope, no one did do it. Ceramic, well, va ceramic we'll just... vase shattering sound. And we'll just edit that into the. I'm just kidding. Got a, got a nice, yeah. Oh, I dropped it. Not a pee, but. All right. Well, I've got a little bit of everything. Else. Cheers, brother. Click. It's gonna be not great. It's more sweet than savory. Kind of drowns out the taste of the meat. Oh, those are bananas. Oh, those taste like bananas. Honestly, a trifle's probably not that bad. I've never had that before. I could eat this. I like it. I don't hate it. To quote Joey, custard, yummy. Jam, yummy. Meat, oh, just so yummy good. That's a direct quote. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's exactly what he you. said. I just kind of, I like, I mean, like. I'll eat this. Yeah, I mean. It's weird, because. I mean, sweet and savory things sometimes go together. Yeah, there are certain tastes in here that probably shouldn't go together. Like, but that, the meat's not the meat. The meat works. Yeah, it's the custard. I think. Um, there's like one taste in there that's just not quite right, but everything else is actually. If you good. isolate a pea, it tastes a little funky. Yeah, which is what I just did. But like I said, I didn't think that it was going to be all that gross to begin with. Ross is way off. Either that or Ross has some. Weird feet. Ross, yeah, Ross is eating the tasting some weird feet. Yeah, I I actually really like this. And now we can at least say that we did it. Um Yeah, again, but, I wouldn't say I really like it, but I don't hate it. I I can eat it without dying. As you as viewers, uh longtime viewers will obviously know, we really don't like the idea of wasting food um in general. This was the smallest trifle dish I could get on hand. Um that wasn't that wasn't too small. Um and I was a little worried that I was going to have all the... I was going to get eaten one way or another. I was going to do, like, an extended mini-series of, like, bonus content on the Patreon of, of just me eating it for eating leftovers over the next several days. I was also a little bit worried because in, in the episode, she makes the trifle before dinner and then kind of sits out on the counter while they eat. So I, I didn't imagine that the meat should be hot. Mm -hmm. um, no, it was good. And I was a little bit worried that the, the beef at the room temperature beef would be... But it's it's not. It actually, you know what it reminds me of? That banana and sausage pizza that we had in the Ninja Turtle episode? <laughs> it kind of does. Which was also eh, not not bad. This is one of those examples of, I think, the idea is more upsetting than the actual thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I do find it so it's nice fun. going, writers on Friends. You don't know from gross. 
Also, wow, this looks. He's going in for seconds. This this looks awful. I'm gonna try it hot, not now. That'll be that'll be bonus content. Um. Also, there's a hypothetical dish pitched in the episode when Phoebe when Phoebe cleverly is like, "Oh, I can't drink this because or I can't eat this because she doesn't eat meat." So she's like, oh, so wait, did you make it with beef or eggplant? Oh, I can't eat it because you made it with beef. And since Katie does not eat red meat, uh, I'm not sure that there's going to be, a, you know, that special little bonus content that we usually make the, the camera operators uh, try it because Will's not with us tonight either. Uh, but yeah, at some future date, I'm going to make it with eggplant and I'm going to make Katie eat the whole thing. That probably wouldn't be that bad. I mean, this is already not that bad. I think it would be worse than this. But I'm not a huge eggplant guy. I mean, I don't hate it, but... I don't dislike it. It's like the beef kind of tastes like nothing, so it's okay in there. Oh, I, I can definitely taste the beef, and it works I get, for me. I get, like, the, the whiffs of salty every now and then. But that could that's also that's be like... That's barely any salt. Yeah. That's why they're mere whiffs. But, but salty, salty sweet is also a good combo. Exactly. That's well established. But do you get that... You get that... You get that umami from the beef. The umami from the beef. Mm -hmm. Please never say it like that again. Yeah. Awesome. Oh. So, the peas are a little. Yeah, I got. I definitely. I got that last bite was was largely pea, and that definitely tasted a little funky. But if you made it without the peas, it would be weird. But I would not find it offensive in any way. I guess I still don't find it inherently offensive other than the way it fucking looks. It's gross as shit. But it we don't that. know that yet. We'll find that out in a few hours. Could that have been any less disappointing? Chandler. Yeah, that was great. It sh sure do be the thing that you just said. So fans, what did what did you think of our kind-hearted critique of Jennifer Aniston and British cooking? And if you out there tried this particularly bizarre parfait, uh does being on a break justify Ross's actions? Actually, they were not on a break. Kate, hey, we're not having this conversation again. Continue. You should absolutely share your thoughts, or anything else on that matter, in the comments. For that matter? For that matter. For sure. And uh, don't forget to, you know, like and, and subscribe. Like, like for real. Like, I mean, if, you, if you've maybe been putting off pushing the subscribe button for whatever reason, um, but you keep coming back and watching, uh, we're getting really close to that magical number that allows us to set a custom URL here on YouTube. So uh, yeah, just, just go ahead and do it now. We'd really appreciate it. Oh, and we know we say it all the time, but word of mouth is the best and probably only way we're going to grow past this stage. So if you know anybody else who might enjoy our goofiness, <laughs> send them a link and encourage them to subscribe. I'm totally not reading off of the script right now. And of course, if you'd like to help in an even more direct way, you might consider becoming our patron on Patreon. Uh, for just one, just one dollar a month, you can get access to, you know, our behind the scenes and bonus and blooper type footage. Uh, we'll also send you a signed tortilla in the mail, assuming you don't opt out. For, uh, I think it's five dollars a month, and you get a nice, uh, under 655 sticker. Uh, thank you. For ten dollars a month, uh, you get a, get a, a nice coffee mug, a branded coffee mug. Uh, it won't look like this. These are actually slightly defective. We've changed it to a wrap design for exactly that reason. Twenty dollars a month will net you a, a nice under 655. 655. Thank you. 655. You're bad at this. T-shirt, like Mike is proudly displaying here, a la Superman, Super Mike, if you will. And then for, for three dollars a month, and we're still working on other possible fun prizes for people. Uh, but you can you can uh, you get yourself one of these nice custom under 655. Six five five. Rocks glasses. Rocks glasses. Uh, that uh, yeah, they just really really class up the joint is what we're saying. And we're all about class here on Port Taste Buds. Lastly, special thanks to YouTube user Stan Tough for the use of that bitch and bardcore cover of "I'll Be There for You," originally by the Rembrandts. And of course, to all of our patrons, uh, Mama Katie, Miss Bankson, uh, Nalwyn, Chris Adams, and newest patron KY. Though uh, we really can't thank you guys enough. It really means a lot. Uh, and. Yeah, just thank you. Uh, in any case, I have been James R.I. Katie. And I is Mike. And we are the poor Taste, Taste Buds of Under 65 Studios. 655. And we'll see you this year. Ah.